Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by Living To Do's review of Power Book 2, Season 3, Episode 8, called Sacrifice. This episode opens up with Davis on the rooftop of his office, and he's up there drinking, um, and Sax comes along to see about him. And we learn he's up there because his brother doesn't want to see him anymore after all that he's done for him. So he's very upset about that. And all I can say about this scene is I didn't enjoy Method Man's acting as a drunk. It was just bad acting. But I love Method Man. Davis gets a call. And he answers the call. And he says, I'll take care of it. Apparently the call was from Monet. And it was really funny how quickly he sobered up because he was informed that Diana was locked up. Sax offers to take care of it. And after which Sax goes off and to take care of Diana, he, Tyreek, he gets a text from, or Tyreek sends a text to Davis saying we need to talk. ASAP. ASAP. So we see uh, Diana, Jenny, and the DA, Blanca. They're in uh, the police station. They have her in the, what's that room called? The interrogation, uh, interrogation room. Um, they're just trying to talk to her because they want her, the more she says will be tied to the RICO case. So they're trying to get her to engage in conversation. But we see Tyreek back at Davis's office. And that's where Tyreek informs Davis that Sachs is the CI. And he wants to know, Davis wants to know how Tyreek knows. And Tyreek tells him he knows because he heard it from Lauren Baldwin. Dun, dun, dun. What? She's a lie. They've been hiding her at the safe house. Davis goes, gets his gun out of the safe. He will start wiling out. But Tariq sees that this dude is drunk. He yeah. He needs to slow it down. He's going to mess things up and things are going to go a lot further than they should. But then he tells Tariq that Diana's in jail. Mmm. Anything she says will be a part of the Rico case. That's what, you know, Tyreek didn't know that. And then we see uh, Monet. We're at her house with Drew. And there's a, a knock at the door. And it's Tyreek. He's informing Monet and the Tejadas that they're all... An, in uh, investigation, under investigation for RICO charges. So he's informed the Tejada family. Then we see Diana and the DA and the DEA in the interrogation room. And they inform Diana that this is a part of a RICO charge. And she explains to how there, there's so many killings tied to you know her family and she names them off as Whitman, Carrie, um, Zeke, and all these people. I wonder if that really scared Diana because she didn't want to know what to do. I don't you I mean you know I don't you don't know much about that but um seems like she's so young that she would be afraid and she would start start talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm pretty sure she knows better based off of her family. Maybe. Yeah. Well, after that, we see Effie in her dorm room and she gets a knock at her door. And it's Kane. And Kane informs her that Diana has been arrested. And he wants to know, how could this have happened? She's been, you know, selling the drugs out of the candy shop, Effie tells him. And there are cameras on the rooftop. 
So maybe that's how it happens. So Cain gets ready to leave, and then Effie comes on to Cain. You know, after all those advances. Yeah, after all the last couple episodes, that's not what I would have expected. No. He was always coming on to her, and she's like, I get away from me, basically. And now she's, well, she's, what happened was she was softened up because he paid the tuition. And for no expectation. For no expectation, like, oh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So somebody did something nice for her. So that's the, you can't just say a simple thank you. Um, so Sax gets to the police station and he's in the hallway with Jenny. And they're talking, uh, they're talking and she wants to know what he's doing there. And he says he's going to represent Diana. And Jenny's like not really happy with that because it's unethical. She's trying to do things by the book and she has to be shady on the side a little bit, but she don't want to do that. Um, and so what happens is they're in the hallway talking and Davis had to sober up because he had to go get sacks away from Diana. So he gets there and you can see him drinking coffee, trying to sober up. And he's about to turn the corner and he sees Jenny and Sax talking and he backs out and he starts to listen to what they're saying. And he, then he approaches them and then they start trying to, they act different when, when he comes around. I was just explaining to Jenny here. <laughs> 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 uh, he came on down because two heads were better than one because he can't let on that, he's that he knows, knows yeah. that Sax is the CI so we have Sax, Davis and Diana they're in there in the room talking to she's in a little private room talking to her lawyers and um <laughs> Davis says, uh, um, only talk to me. You know, we say, just talk to me about everything. And then Sax says, talk to us. <laughs> Davis gets mad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess she felt threatened um, by, by the questioning that she had. Um, and she's about to talk. And Davis acted quick and he spills hot coffee all over Sax's lap. Uh, so uh, he has to excuse himself, you know, for a second. And so we, as Sax is, you know, focusing on his pants and the hot coffee and, and Davis is kind of guiding him out of the room, she, I guess Davis slips a note to her saying, put everything on Effie, trust me. How long did he have time to write that note? Probably right after he got the message. No, put everything on Effie and you had time to, maybe he was going to just, he had it on him to see if he could make, I don't know. That was just interesting how he had that note. He was with Tariq right before he left. He, how would you know to make a note? How else would you tell Effie without telling Cooper? I know, but how did he oh, know? I... Yeah, I don't know. It was just interesting, uh -huh. that, that note. Okay, so in the next scene, we have Effie and Kane. Uh, they're getting out of bed. I guess, is it the next morning? I don't know what was the next morning. And there, there's a knock at the door as they're getting dressed. And... Tyreek, I guess, is talking through the door. They know it's Tyreek. And Effie wants him, Kane, to hide in the bathroom. And Kane, he, he, he wants to face Tyreek. He ain't afraid of him. You know, he says he don't want to, you want me to hide in the bathroom like a simp? It's like, she doesn't want to make um, things worse than they are. So he does go in the bathroom. And... Tyreek talks to Effie about a job and I guess it's something to do with a drug. <clears throat> I guess you would get a lower end guy to do this drug run that she has been asked to do. 
And um, she says, you know, she I guess he talked her into it. So she's going to do this drug run. So it was interesting. Well, let's go on. Let's go. On. I'll talk more about it because I want to say something about that. OK, so in the next scene, uh, Monet and Drew are at their house with the Castillo family. And um, they're talking about um, what were they really dealing, discussing? They were just Monet was letting them know about the Rico that's going on. That's right. And the Castillos were wondering where Gordo has been since mm. Drew is there, and they've been spending time together and wondering if he had any information on his whereabouts. Right. The, the Castillo family consisted of three brothers and the mother. I guess she has four sons. So um, she, the mother is asking Drew, have you seen Gordo? And is everything okay? Because I guess they all know they're in a relationship. I thought that was a secret, but okay, they're in a relationship. And he says, oh, yeah, everything's good. It's good. Now, one of the Castillo boys walked into one of their places with Drew. And I had, like, a discussion last episode. I'm pretty sure everyone knew that they were oh. in cahoots or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, really asking, do you know where he is? Yeah, because they have, and they called him. I don't know how much time has passed since he killed him. Um, so we have Kiki... She's going to Brandon's house. Um, yeah, no, Brayden. Brayden, I don't Brayden's house. And. Oh, so she's there because I don't know why she's there. She's letting him know that Monet called asking for Lucas. Why did you need to go to his house to tell them that? Go pick up the phone, text him. It looked like they were like a country club. And he was on like a movie. Well, no, but Kiki went to Bra Braden's house to let Braden know that Monet is asking for Lucas. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. But why would she need to go to his house for that? Isn't that weird? It is kind of, I don't know. Let me uh, go to your house to tell you something that's going on at work. There's emails. That's there's like a, I don't know, it's a personal quarters. <laughs> I know. It's not a work setting. What are you doing here? So, um, the next scene we have Kane and Monet. And she informs Kane that they're, the feds are watching, trying to build a Rico case. And don't tell Effie about it. And she's also um, asking about the money... Uh, that he gave Weston. She wants her money back. So he thought he was doing a good deed, you know, keeping the money clean and straight. And Monet don't trust them. And she wants her money back. Okay. So Tyreek and Brayden are talking. And I think they're at work. And Tyreek informs Brayden now about the RICO charges. And he's all, YSL Rico? Which is crazy on its own if you guys are following that case. That's unbelievable. That is Keystone Cop in real life. Crazy. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, Brayden informs Tyreek that Weston Holdings is a giant, big giant Ponzi scheme. So, Tyreek is on he knows immediately like his trust fund money is gone. The Tejada money is gone too. Well, I don't I think that did he reform he informed him that uh, Braden informed Tyreek that about the Tejada money. I don't know if he knew about it um beforehand. Uh so that's a shock to them. So we see Monet going to a country club and I guess she had been calling Lucas and he wasn't answering. So she got wind that he's at the clubhouse and she goes there and all ritzy as she thinks she looks, she's walking in with all these people, <laughs> all these really rich people, old money. And she does in comparison look trashy compared to those people. She just looks overdone. 
<laughs> she walked in. She was doing a slightly too much. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Um, yeah, she, and then she had that bossy attitude, um, and she wants her money. I want my money. She says, when I want my money, I want you to give me my money, basically. Uh, and she made a scene there and walked away. So, we have Diana and Sax, and they're in the, um, like an interrogation room or wherever you talk to your lawyer at in jail. And Diana is telling Sax, uh, can I trust you? Because I don't trust Davis. And now she's saying this because she knows she has to uh, make him believe that she's going to be talking to him, giving him all this information. And uh, Sax is like, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem, you know you know, I'm here for you type of thing. Uh, so she tells them basically, uh, to, to look at Effie. Effie's your girl. Effie? Cause he wants to hear other names, you know? Mm -hmm. So he takes this information to Blanca, the DEA and Jenny, the DA. And he tells him that Effie's your girl. You should be looking at Effie. Diana Tejada told him this. Uh, the DEA is not happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> she wants Tyreek more than anything. They're going to put a tell on her. Um, because if that's where the, you know, the information is guiding them, they're that she will be the girl that they follow. So Kane and Effie are on the phone. And I think he was trying to hint to her uh, about being in the business or getting it, not doing the job that he's, she's been asked to do. But then he hears a loud noise and he runs off. So here's the scene where I think he thought they were setting up Effie for real, for real. And he was trying to drop little hints so she would, you know decide not to go um, and do what Tyreek is asking because he knows it's a setup. He That's what I think. He believes it was a true setup at this point because he wouldn't be telling her, he wouldn't be hinting to her not to do it. Ah. Uh. But he got interrupted because he hears a loud noise in his house. Drew. And it was Drew. But he was hinting without telling Diana, I mean not Diana, without telling Effie not to do it. Uh -huh. But he had to hurry up and hang up with her because he heard a loud noise. And he went to go see about the noise. And it was his brother Drew making this loud noise. Was he throwing things at this point? Yeah, he's he, breaking glass and all types of stuff. Because he's watching TV and he sees his ex-boyfriend Everett on the on television being interviewed because he's like a, a basketball player somewhere. And I think he's in the NBA now. OKC, yeah. OKC. And he's coming out as one of the first openly gay guys and on television he brings out his boyfriend and this upsets drew he is heartbroken he is broken hearted about this i don't know if he would have publicly come out as gay right drew yeah isn't he already openly gay I don't know if he He's is. With doing Gordo and he was just with the Everett dude. They were at Stansfield and stuff. Maybe. But he uh, is pissed about this boyfriend. Hurt, 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 hurt. Okay, so we have to go to these debates. Tate is debating because he's running for office. And in the crowd in attendance is Lucas and Brandon and Brandon's dad, and also Tyreek is there with RSJ hearing Ty, uh, Tate speak. And uh, I don't think Brandon's dad was at first 
into what uh, Tate was saying, but during the speech or after the speech, he seemed to think that was their man to uh, go into business with. So in the next scene, we have Saxon Davis. They're in the office. Uh, Theo Rollins comes in. And he's all excited telling his brother, you know, that he is a great candidate for this treatment plan that his brother was able to get him, get him into. And Sax is there and he's really happy for him, genuinely happy for him. And then, you see, Davis knows he's the CI and he has to play it cool as much as possible. But he snaps on Sax, you know, can I spend some time with my brother and so it was like, that was kind of off-putting to Sax, but he leaves the <laughs> two of them alone. <laughs> and this gives a chance for Davis to tell his brother, Theo Rollins, that Sax is a CI, which really upsets uh Theo because his brother yeah and that something about his case like whatever sex I think when you're like you're a bad um, cop or a bad uh, representative sometimes they'll review your cases and overturn them so maybe he would have to go back to jail too you know yeah, yeah. so um, so of course that's something that Rollins wants to think. I mean, that's he's pissed too. He don't want to go back to jail after all this. He liked that uh, that free life. Okay, so Tate and the teacher they are talking after the debate. He's going out with the professor at the college, and she, I guess she saw him talking to the Westons after the after the debate. And she doesn't want him working with them. Uh, he tries to butter her up. He's even asking her to marry him. Um, and he said he will cancel the meeting with them. Because, you know, I guess that might be... a Maybe they're like equivalent to the Trumps or something. Like, you, if you do business with them, those people, I want nothing to do with you. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. So... After the debate, oh, I guess Tyreek came up. I think he did. He come up after the debate. He wasn't in the debate. He met um, RSJ outside of the debate, and that's where Tyreek was able to inform him of the Ponzi scheme. That Weston is all a Ponzi scheme. So at first, RSJ is mad at Tyreek because he only signed with them because of Tyreek. Tyreek was saying. Um, he just became aware of it himself. He's like, oh, yeah, what do you want to do about it? You know, what are you willing to do? So they cut to the next scene where we see Effie. She is being followed by the feds. They see her picking up drugs. They take pictures of her. So they're following her to the next stop. Meanwhile, um, Sax is on the phone with Jenny and uh, Jenny is telling Sax that Effie is getting them what they what they want. You know, they can because they got uh, it was crazy. She's outside. She drives up. She's out in the open and where they can see her putting boxes from one car to another car. Why aren't you in a garage? Some type of shelter. All exposed. Very exposed, but people can just snap pictures. Bye. Very, <laughs> um, so with next, we have um, Drew, he's at a bar and he's heartbroken, he's drinking, and he sees Everett walk in. I guess Everett's in town, he's back in New York, and he's arm in arm with his boyfriend. and they go over and they speak to Drew and Drew's drunk and he snaps on the boyfriend and the boyfriend is kind of getting defensive and Everett, you know, shoes the boyfriend away. And then Drew starts talking and crying, talking about, you know, you were gone. I did have somebody in my life and I don't now it's messed up. 
and he's crying into Everett's arms. And Edred, Everett holds him while he just cries because he's brokenhearted. He killed his love and he sees his other love has moved on and he just lost his dad too. So he's very heartbroken and he's like in public in a bar crying hard in, in Everett's arms. Okay. So in the next scene we see Effie, she is being pulled over by the police or she's actually, we see her carrying drugs. She has them in her arm. She's outside of her car and the police come up, pull up, with their sirens on. She looks and she notices that it is for her. So she drops what she has and she takes off running like a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't get far. They catch up with her and arrest her. Um, and I guess she was right in front of the distri distribution center where they house all the drugs that Noma gave them. So she pulls up there and the the feds go into the warehouse the distribution center and they see all these drugs it's just so much so they put it on the table and they cut it open and they test it and it tests negative negative for drugs and so they i guess maybe they taste it they found out that all the drugs in the warehouse is just sugar. Mm. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so we see Tyreek. He's down the street. I guess he has the cameras on his phone. So he's watching what they're doing. Ugh. Just sugar. It's sugar. <laughs> <laughs> And then I think um, then that's when Tyreek tells Monet that it's done. We see Drew goes viral in that scene that he made at the bar that he lost his someone. He's, you know, he's gone. And the family, the Castillo family sees this. And I, he said, and they're upset because, well, they're upset, but they're concerned because they just asked Drew where he was. He didn't know and everything was good in the relationship. Now you have the scene going viral that you lost your person. So they need to have a talk with Drew. That's basically what's going to happen. Uh, in fact, they're taking it a little too lightly. You, you're in that life where people go missing all the time. I guess you don't, they're not even thinking it's a possibility that... <clears throat> that Drew would have murdered their, their loved one. Okay, so we have Monet, Kane, and Tyreek. They have a meeting. And Effie comes in. And she is coming in because I guess she got released from the police because what they had on her was nothing. And she's, she says she's not mad that they had to do it. She's mad that they had to, that they left her in the dark, but she would have left them in the dark too. She said, but then she leaves and she leaves what came. And so I think Monet knew about this because when Tyreek was talking to Monet about it, like you're just going to let them be, you know, go off together and she don't care. Um, so I don't know, Tyreek, I didn't know Monet knew. I thought it was a very, so new. How did she know it was Effie? I don't know. Anyway. She knew because Kane missed the meeting earlier in the episode because he was at Stansfield with Effie. And did, Monet was with Drew and the Castillo. Right. But how did Monet know she, he was with Effie? Kane, didn't Kane say he was going to meet with Effie or something? And then he came back after the meeting and then Monet confronted him. I didn't know he said he was going to be with Effie. Okay. All right. So. I don't know if he said that, but Monet knew when he got back that he was with Effie. So when they leave, Monet talks to Tyreek. And she says, you know, my money's up at Weston. And I want my money back. So I know this is going to be building to be a bigger problem. Because she didn't, he never did disclose to her. Well, Weston is a, a 
you know, a Ponzi scheme. Because I think she would have gone with guns blazing that afternoon over there. Yes, she did. Yeah. So we have... Um, okay, so Jenny and Sax, uh, they're talking, and Jenny lets them know that they know about you. And this case blew up in her face. It's making her look bad. And she's not going to be able to get any protection for Sax. Uh... And then, you know, he's upset because he's not getting any protection. He knows he's very exposed. He is a target. And she's getting mad at him because, you know, he didn't come through like he should have. Um, so they have hard feelings and they, they part ways. Sax is in the parking lot getting into his car and he calls Tyreek. And he basically says, you know, he's trying to plead his case to Tyreek. Tyreek doesn't answer, so he leaves a phone message on the phone. Meanwhile, Theo Rollins pops up from the back with the gun to Sax's head. Um, they drive off. And, you know, of course, you know, he don't want to be killed. He's trying to plead his case to this guy. So next we have uh, Lucas. He's in his office with RSJ, Tar uh, Tyreek, and Braden. And he informs, RSJ informs Lucas... But I know your whole Weston uh, company is a Ponzi scheme. And RSJ is pissed. He wants his money back. He also wants Tyreek's trust fund money back and the Tejada money. Actually, it was Brayden that interrupted and mentioned the Tejada money. So uh, Lucas knows that Brayden is the one who inform these two <clears throat> of the Ponzi scheme. And Lucas tells him that there is no money to give back. Okay, so we have Tate. He is talking to his girlfriend, the teacher. I don't even know what her name is. I can't remember her name. Um, the teacher. Now, she is informing him that... Um, Brashan Nira, what's her name? I know it's Light Skin Keisha's character. She informed the teacher that Tate did, in fact, have a meeting with the Westons. And she's mad. <clears throat> He's trying to, you know, um, give that boyish charm that he has to soften her up. And then he says, you know, I, I had a meeting. They gave me campaign money. And she's like, give it back, you know, and he doesn't want to lose their money. So he can't give it back. He needs it for his campaign to win. <clears throat> so since he won't give back the money, he's going to have to lose her. So she pretty much breaks up with him because she doesn't want to have anything to do with anybody in bed with the Westons, which is really interesting because they she doesn't want to have anything to do with them. But they they put that endowment fund at the college that she works for. <laughs> you got more to do with them than he did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Interesting, huh? So Tyreek is with Davis, and I guess he plays the call message that um, Sax left for Tyreek. He plays it for Davis, kind of played with him. Um, and then at the same time, he receives a call from his brother's treatment center. And I think they're telling him... Well, the stuff's not working. The stuff's not working. Sorry. Goodness. And he's like, huh? So, uh, they couldn't reach Sax. So, they think now that Theo is with Sax and he's not in this treatment's all connected. So Tyreek and Davis go looking for Sax. Meanwhile, Diana gets out of jail and Monet picks her up from jail. And she's begging to get out of the business. You know, she almost did, you know, a, a long bid for a crime that she's not even into, that she's forced into. And she wants to get out of New York, too. She wants all out of it. And, you know, 
Monet <clears throat> is one of those toxic mothers. <laughs> she just banishes her to the car and she ain't hearing of it. Ugh, Monet. Monet. Uh, so we see Kane and Effie. They're in a love scene. They're together and... He's asking her if she's cool with what went down. And I guess she has to be cool with it. They're getting dressed. When they get a knock at the door, it's maintenance is at the door. And they want to come in and they're getting dressed. Effie opens the door and she gets arrested again. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Effie. <sighs> so she has to take that long perp walk to Jenny who's waiting outside the DA and I guess Effie's like, you can't get me on this, uh, any drugs. I don't have any drugs. Yeah, you're right. Jenny says, we are not getting you on that. We're getting you on something else. We're getting you on murder. And Effie's trying to like, what? she kind of looks bewildered. What do you mean murder? And then slowly the, SUV, there's a window and on the passenger side slowly comes down and they reveal Lauren. Lauren and Effie meet eye to eye and Lauren says yeah, that she's the one. So she positively IDs Effie as the person who tried to murder her. And little do we know is Kane is coming out behind her and he sees Effie too. I mean, not Effie. He sees <laughs> Lauren too. He's got this big bug eyes looking at her. Oh my God. I thought, I thought she was killed type look. So he runs in the opposite direction. Effie did too. She said, I thought she was <laughs> She knows she's in trouble now. So um, we see Sax and Theo. And uh, Theo has a gun to Sax. Um, and somehow Davis and Tyreek figure out where they were and they caught up to him. And he's, he, the Davis is pleading with his brother, you know, put the gun down. I can get you out of this. Uh, just, you know, don't do anything that, you know, you can't turn, you can't, you know. Uh, you can't change any, he's out of talking. He tells them, you know, I, the treatment, I didn't, you know, I'm not going to be um, able to get the treatment. It's not going to help me. I'm going to be dead in a month. So this is the best way out. He shoots sacks. He shoots sacks dead and the street and they're all screaming and screaming and Tyreek and uh, Davis and they're pleading with them and, the brother, he ends up shooting himself, too, because he does not going to live he, anyway. So he shoots himself. Of course, this upsets uh, Davis, you know, his brother killing himself. And Tyreek is there looking on. And Tyreek is bug eye. He just can't believe what down. <laughs> <laughs> they were shook. <laughs> that is a great way to describe it. <laughs> But that was it. I absolutely love this episode. I was so surprised for them to kill a main character, Sax. Even though I, he, Sax was the character that I loved to hate. And, you know, we needed him to play off of to get away with all the things that we like to see our favorite characters get away with. So I'm sad to see Sax go. Um, it was a love-hate thing. I just loved that you were there so we could... To you, we could just use you, and now I don't know how how the story is going to end. But we need to get more players so we can play off them. And but Sax was too much of a main character, I thought, to lose at this time. But they're moving fast. Looks like they might be moving in another direction. But I love this episode. What did you think? I agree. It's it kind of sucks to see somebody from the original power leave, but. Good point. It is what it is at the end of the day. Yeah. Great episode. Season. The end season is looking 
pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, what it's say? been it's been fast paced all along, so I, they have to keep it up. I, I there's no way that they slow it down. It was it was really really good. I enjoyed it. All gas, no break. That's right. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for staying with us to the end. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. We would really appreciate it, and we thank you in advance. But we gotta go, cause what? We got living to do. Bye.